Once again, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Kindly open cam. Oh, merong attendance sa uh, form sa 2-1, ah. Pero gusto kong namiss ko kayo, eh. Gusto ko yung makita ulit. Diba? Walang pinagbago. Aba, oh. May mas umastig ang itsura. Ganyan dapat. Diba? Meron ding mas bumata. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> thank you, thank you guys. Let us resume with our class. Allow me to share my screen. Okay. While we are doing our class, you can as well log in with your attendance sheet sent by your class representative. Tapos sa 2 2 Kung wala kayong Google Form na attendance, pwede yung screenshot din. Now, can you see my screen? Yes, sir. Ito yung sabi ko eh. <laughs> okay. So, last meeting, we were able to discuss crime scene investigation conducted by the local investigator and the scene of the crime operation conducted by our forensics group or our crime lab. Yun yung unang pangalan lang. Crime lab, now forensics group or forensics unit. We were also able to know that before the response of our investigator, we have the called first responder, which we will be further discuss later on. So we ended up here last meeting, the significant activities at the crime scene. So when a crime is committed and we were there to respond as investigators, what are our significant activities? So, this is our significant activities. We have to search evidence. We have to hindi siya naka-arrange in proper order pala. Search evidence. We have to mark and tag evidence and preserve that evidence through sketch and photography. We have to collect that evidence after we have properly packed and sealed it and transport that evidence we shall also observe the chain of custody of that specific evidence wait lang I admit lang natin yan So, ito yung gagawin mo next meeting, uh, Mikael. Balikaw na ang mag-admit. Ikaw yung gagawa ng link. Tapos, ibibigay mo sa amin yung link para maka-join kami. Ikaw ang mag-admit. So, we can go on with discussion and you will be the one in charge with the admission of classes 2-2 and 2-1. Yes, sir. Happy, okay. sir.
So again, can you uh, can you see my screen? Yes, po, sir. Okay. So these are the significant activities in the crime scene. So again, what is crime scene investigation? It is the investigation of the crime scene or of the place where a crime had been committed. So what are the process in crime scene investigation? So upon the commission of a crime, a concerned citizen will be reporting such crime to the nearest police unit or to the police unit having jurisdiction over the place of incident. So, kung sa Cavite nangyari yung krimen, and police Cavite will be responding, di ba? So, upon the report of the incident to the police, the first responder will proceed at the crime scene. So, what are the duties and responsibilities of the first responder? Take note, ladies and gentlemen, that the first responder is different from the investigator. So, magkaiba sila ng duties and roles. So, these are the duties and functions, duties and responsibilities of our first responder. He has to save and preserve life. This is the most significant duty of a first responder. Upon arrival at the crime scene, if there are victims who are severely injured, who is almost about to die, the first responders shall prioritize saving the life of that person. Provide emergency first aid for those injured at the crime scene. So if there are other victims who are not severely injured, so after you have in, uh, have uh, assisted the severely injured, the first thing you tapos na mapunta sa hospital, then second is to provide emergency first aid to those other injured victims. And while attending to the most severe injured victim, you shall prepare to take the dying declaration of the injured or severely injured victim. So what is a dying declaration? Have you discussed this in your other subject? Yes po sir. Sa... Ay, actually hindi pa sir. Pero ma matatakal po yan sa water survival. First in water survival. Dying declaration? Ah, pwede. Ipo ba yan sir yung... Pagka nalulunod yung biktima. A dying declaration, it sh uh, this is supposed to be discussed during under your evidence kasi evidence dying declaration pertains to the statement of a severely injured person conscious of his impending death so isang element yon nadadama ng biktima na mamamatay na siya tapos ngayon Alam din nung biktima, parang damang-daman niya na mamamatay siya and willing din siya to testify para sa kanyang sasabihin. And yung sasabihin niyang yun is related sa crime. <coughs> Excuse me. Mostly yung mga, mga persons who are uh, aware of their impending death Medyo mahihirapang magsalita yung mga yan. Tipid na yung kanilang salita. Mga 2 to 3 words lang ang kanilang bigkasin. Mga anak, tapos mahirapan ng magsalita. So, in that way, titipidin nila yung kanilang sasabihin. Straight to the point na ang sasabihin nila. It's either, it's either, hindi nga, pwede hindi na nga sila makapagsalita eh. Kumbaga, uh, 
signal lang ang gagawin nila. Bow if yes or twist their head from left to right if no. Or right to left if no. Diba? Ganon. Tapos kung magsasalita, straight to the point, yung pangalan ng perpetrator agad ang sasabihin niya. Yan ang dying declaration. Ngayon, pagka namatay yung biktima, tapos nakuhanan mo siya ng dying declaration niya, then, uh, that's now arrest just stay. Uh, dying declaration sa pangalan nito is arrest just stay. Yes? Uh, sir, question lang po sir. Paano kung sir yung first responder tsaka yung uh, yung victim lang na, na, na nasa dying declaration na po, yung nando dun sa scene po. Paano po magiging valid yung pag-take ng first responder dun sa dying declaration po? Kung wala naman pong other witnesses or yun po. Valid yun, valid yun. Pagka ang mayroon dun is yung victim and yung first responder lang. Wala nang ibang tao. Opo sir, paano po ang ganun? The first responder is now the primary witness kung sakali mang mamatay yung biktima. So that will now be a arrest just stay. Kung magte-testify na ngayon yung ano, yung police officer, I will be testifying on the dying declaration of this victim. I attended to him and he cannot speak. He could hardly speak. And I asked him, uh, sa tingin mo ba yung mamamatay ka na? And he nodded. So, umuo daw siya. Tapos, sino ang may kagagawan nito? I asked him and he said, Juan Lucas. Sabi niya yung Juan Lucas. And then, I also asked him, are you willing to testify or to tell this under oath that the person who did this to you is Juan Lucas and he again nodded so nagnod ulit siya so ganun mag ganun magte-testify ngayon yung first responder so it is now valid by declaration pagka namatay yung victim however pagka hindi naman namatay yung victim it will uh, that statement is not is no longer considered as a dying declaration, di ba? Kasi nabuhay nga siya. So, hindi na siya dying declaration, but it will form part of rest just state. Pwede pa rin maging evidensya. Pero, kung i-compare mo pa rin kasi ang dying declaration compared sa part of rest just state, mas mabigat ang dying declaration. Same is true if you compare object evidence with documentary evidence, di ba? Mas mabigat si object evidence compared kay documentary evidence. Eh, mas lalo naman malaki yung agwat ng object evidence compared to affidavit lang, na walang evidensya. Testimony. Pag naglaban yung object evidence at saka yung testimony sa court, mas mananaig yung object evidence. Parang ganun. That's my point. Yun. So, we have as the first responder, we have to prepare to take the dying declaration of the severely injured person. And upon arrival at the crime scene, again, if we were able to observe the suspect at the crime scene, automatic that we have to arrest, detain, and remove any suspect present if more than, uh, if more than one, we have to isolate. Uh, accept ko lang yung mga yun, guys. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, let's resume. Ayan. So, being the first responder, if the suspect is at the crime scene, we have to warrantless 
arrest him, di ba? Arrest him by a warrantless arrest. Detain him and remove any suspect at the crime scene. If there are two or more suspects, we have to arrest them and isolate them from one another. So, paghihiwalayin natin sila from one another. What is the importance? Bakit natin paghihiwalayin yung mga suspect natin? For them to be prevented from fabricating story or defenses para hindi sila makagawa ng kwento. Diba? Kasi pagka later on, during the interview and interrogation, pagka nasa grupo sila, ay, confirm yung kwento nila. Nagsusuportahan sila sa isa't isa. Pero pagka in-isolate mo ka agad, tapos in-interview mo, interrogate, magkakaiba na yung mga sasabihin yan, for sure. And you will know who's telling the truth and who is lying, who is hiding something. And even one among them can go against me other. So, pwedeng may isang magsasabi na, ay, si ano kasi, siya lahat may kasalanan dyan, nadamay lang ako. So, eh, yun na. Mas mapapalabi ang investigasyon in that case. <coughs> Excuse me. Anwit lang ulit natin yun. Sabay, nawala. Nawala. Yan. Next is, ito na yung primary duty and responsibility of the first responder. So, magkaiba yung most significant duty of the first responder from the primary duty of the first responder. So, magkaiba yung primary sa most significant, pinaka-importante sa uh, main task. Kumbaga. So, the main task of our first responder is to cordon the area to secure and preserve the crime scene. So, yan. So, how do you preserve the crime scene? By cordoning the area. How do you cordon the area? By protecting the perimeter through police line, straw rope, pwedeng human barricade din. Kung meron kayong cooperative na uh, multitask multitaskers. Ay, hindi. Hindi multitaskers. Ng mga community. Kung meron kayong willing to oh, cooperate na community. Prevent entry of persons into the cordon area. So, lahat ng tao bawal mong papasukin. Kahit na sabihin niya na ako yung may-ari ng bahay na yan. Papasukin mo ako. No. Huwag mong papasukin kasi even the owner of that structure can also be a witness. Malay mo kung siya pa rin perpetrito, pinapasok mo, ayan, pinagsisira niya, pinagtatago niya, o pinagkukuha niya na yung mga ebidensya. Hindi wala na tayong makukuha ang ebidensya against him. Conduct preliminary interview of witnesses to determine what and how witnesses, or what and how crime was committed. So, tanongin din natin yung mga witnesses upon arrival sa crime scene. Kung yan ay kung mayroon tayong maratnan. Prepare to brief the investigators of the situation upon their arrival. So, ganyan na mayayari. Uh, habang wala pa si investigator sa crime scene, yan lahat yung gagawin ni first responder. Tapos, upon arrival of the investigator at the crime scene, the first responder will now brief the investigator on case. He will now relay all the necessary facts and details of the of that crime scene to the investigator on case. So, yeah. The investigator on case will now conduct assessment of the crime scene. So, is a crime scene investigator. Ang investigator natin dito is tinatawag na investigator on case. Sa scene of the crime operation, yung investigator natin na tinatawag is the crime lab or the uh, now which we call forensic group. So, 
the investigator on case conduct assessment of the crime scene. And the SOCO team leader, on the hand, other hand, also conduct initial survey. Diba? So this is similar. The investigator on case conduct assessment of the crime scene to determine the extent of the crime scene and to plan for the proper approach of that crime scene. The investigator investigate the incident and conduct crime scene processing. He search and evaluate evidence at the crime scene and he document such evidence by blue photographs and sketch. And he collect evidence, have it under his custody, and transport such pieces of evidence to the evidence custodian or to the and to the evidence custodian. Then ay kung walang crime lab na pupunta sa crime scene. Pero kung merong crime lab or merong soko, soko na respond sa crime scene, dun na niya itaturn over yung mga evidence sa crime scene mismo. So now, uh, the investigator on case request for SOCO assistance. So in not all in not all cases that the investigator request for the assistance of SOCO, gaya ng sabi ko sa inyo last meeting, depende sa kaso, ayan, and depende kung hindi kaya ni investigator on case. <coughs> sa mapakinamdam ko. Ayan na. So, kung hindi kaya ni investigator, mag-investiga uh, mag sa crime scene alone, then he has to call the assistance of the SOCO. And the investigator on case will now turn over the crime scene to the SOCO upon the arrival of the SOCO. So, ganun din ang mangyayari. Lahat naman ng mga na-recover, lahat ng evidence, lahat ng detail of the crime scene will be relayed by the investigator on case to the SOCO team leader upon the arrival of the SOCO team leader. And the SOCO or in the crime lab will evaluate evidence at the crime scene. They do documentation, photograph, sketches. They collect and handle evidence and they acquire custody of such evidence and they take charge of the transportation of that evidence. After that, yan, after the SOCO has completed their investigation at the crime scene, after they have gathered all the necessary evidence, then they will now release the crime scene to the investigator on case. Yan. And this is referenced by POP or Poli PNP Operational Procedure Section 4 Paragraph I that the SOCO shall always shall always turn over the crime scene to the investigator on case. So, yun lang. Doon lang nila pwedeng i-turn over yung crime scene. Okay, investigator on case. Now, we have here the importance of the role of our first responder. Naririnig nyo rin ba yung naririnig ko sa laptop ko? Yung parang pagka may nagpapa-admit? Or ako lang? Narinig, sir. Ay, narinig, sir. Narinig, sir, yung para pong nag-e-echo. Oo nga, eh. <laughs> Kala ko sa akin lang. Yeah, excuse me, yun lang akong tubig.
Okay. So these are the duties of the first responder. <clears throat> first is to cordon the crime scene. Evacuate injured person to the nearest hospital. Take the dying declaration of the most or severely injured victim and assist the investigator on the case, especially kung mag lang ng investigator. And during trial, the first responder shall always attend to court duties. Kasi kung hindi nag-participate yan sa kaso, and because of him, na-dismiss yung kaso, or na-quit yung... Sir? Yes? Sir, nakamit ka, sir. Ay! Buti sinabi nyo, buti hindi pa nakalayo. Namit ko pala. Nag-excuse yata si Sir Bads kasi may nag-feedback sa laptop niya. Yan. Thank you guys. So let's resume. Yeah. So we have here the duties of the first responder. Ulitin na natin. One is to cordon the crime scene. Evacuate the injured person to the nearest hospital. Take the dying declaration of the severely injured victim. And assist the investigator on case and during trial the first responder shall attend to court duties kasi pagka hindi nag-attend yan sa court duties malaki rin kaya ang rule ng first responder pwedeng ma-acquit o ma-dismiss yung kaso for his non-participation and his non-participation is a non-performance of duties and responsibilities. So, pwedeng matanggal yung matanggal sa servisyo. Pwedeng ma-admin case yung first responder. Kung hindi siya nag-attend sa court duties niya, pwedeng matanggal sa, sa servisyo. Ganyan. Prevent entry and exit of persons within the cordon area. So, gaya na sabi natin, kahit na nagpakilala birang may-ari ng structure, ng crime scene, huwag nating papasukin. And take notes. Uh, parang yung ano, parang yung rough uh, sketch lang din to. Kung minsan, hinahanapan din ng first note yung first responder. Yan. So, hinahanap yung tickler niya. Hinapahanap ng defense lawyer. Ganyan din kayo important yung original note. Yung take note ng first responder. Kaya dapat hindi nawawala yung tickler niya. And the first responder shall brief the investigator on case upon the arrival of the investigator on case. Now, we discussed a while back the dying declaration. What is, by the way, the requisites of a dying declaration? First is that death is imminent and the declarant is conscious of the fact. Means to say, death is imminent, damang-dama na ng biktima. And the declarant is conscious and alam na alam niya na mamamatay na siya. Second is, the declaration refers to the cause and surrounding of the circumstances of such death. Lahat ng sinabi ng biktima ay dapat related sa insidente, yung pagiging pagkamatay niya. Hindi dapat related sa ibang kaso. Dapat yun mismo, dun mismo sa immediate na case, case na yun. So, kung one look ang sinabi niya, ah, siya na yung bumaril kay biktima. The declaration relates to the facts which the victim is competent to testify to. 
kasi tatanungin rin ng pulis. Ah, hindi ka na mamamatay eh. Magsusurvive ka pa. Yan parati ang sasabihin. Huwag na huwag ka, pag first responder kayo, tapos kahit na severely injured yung person, huwag nyo, huwag na huwag nyo sasabihin na, ay putol yung limb mo, mamamatay ka, maubusan ka ng dugo. Huwag. Never tell that to any victim. Sabihin nyo na, mabubuhay ka, kaya-kaya mo yan. Ganyan. Tapos, after saying that, you will ask him, Are you willing to testify on court? Can you swear this under oath na si Juan Lucas ang bumarik sa'yo? Pag nag-nod siya, uh, yes. Yan. And the declaration is offered to a case wherein the declarant's death is subject of the inquiry. So later on, pagka namatay yung biktima, tapos nag-succeed yung kaso, ang magiging witness na yun is yung first responder. Ayan. Tapos, patatanungin. Is there first responder? The accused in this case is Juan Lucas. Uh, what do you say about this? Your Honor, I took the dying declaration of the victim. I asked the victim whether or not He feels like he is dying and he said yes. And he mentioned to me na the name of Juan Lucas. I asked him if it's Juan Lucas who shot him and he nodded. So, umoo. And I also asked him if he is willing to testify on court against Juan Lucas. He again nodded, Your Honor. So, parang ganyan yung pag-testify ngayon ng first responder. So, kaya ngayon, si Juan Lucas ang accused. And what are the stages of crime scene investigation? So, based on the Federal Bureau of Investigation, FBI, Crime scene administration procedures as, are as follows. First is the preparation and approach, followed by the secure and protection of the crime scene. Preliminary survey or walkthrough. So, yan ah. Preliminary survey is otherwise known as walkthrough to determine the crime scene boundary. Evaluate physical evidence possibilities. How do you evaluate physical evidence possibilities? Specifically, if the case is homicide. So, paano homicide? Titignan nyo yung wound niya. Is that a stab wound or a, an entrance wound of a gun? Or exit wound of a gun? Pagka stab wound yan, we know what we're looking for. The evidence that we'll be looking for is a knife, a bolo, something, or anything sharp na pwedeng panaksak, di ba? So, ganun. That's how we evaluate physical evidence. Prepare narrative description. So when we say narrative description, the complete story of the incident. And in preparing narrative description, under this narrative description, we have the spot report, progress report, final report, investigation report. Diba? And in preparing these reports, we shall uh, do it properly. We shall state it as witness. Huwag tayong magsabi na hindi natin nakita. Let's say for example, yung isang side lang ng ship yung nakita nyo. Tapos, ang nilagay nyo sa report, nakita ko yung buong uh, itsura ng uh, ship. No, no, that's no no in investigation. Huwag kayong mag uh, conclude na kulang-kulang yung ebidensya. Kumbaga, kung ano lang yung nakita nyo, yun lang ang sasabi nyo. Huwag dagdag bawas. Huwag marites. Hindi tayo marites. We are not marites. So, yun lang. And avoid using flowery words. Huwag nyo masyadong, huwag masyadong ang dami-daming flowery words. Let's say, for example, mayroon kayong witness. <coughs> Although, maganda naman talaga yung witness. Let's say, for example, Oh, maganda yung witness ng pangalan. Ay, anong pangalan ng witness? Gole, sir. Go Gole? 
Ah, goles. Oo. Oh. Yes, ah. <laughs> o kung mari, hindi, bawal, bawal kasi magbigay ng, ano eh, ng pangal ng student eh. Pa- Ana, o oh, sabihin natin si Ana. Napakaganda naman talaga ni Ana. Siya yung in-interview mo na investigator ka, di ba? Tapos, ang ilalagay mo ngayon sa narrative description, description according to the most beautiful witness named Ana, wag ganun. According to witness Ana, yun lang. Ganun lang. Wag yun lang i-describe. Don't use flowery words. Hindi naman related yung itsura ni Ana sa kaso eh. Ang related naman is yung statement niya, yung mga sinabi niya. Ah, uh, Pepe, ayan, depict scene photography. So, depict scene photography. And in photography, dapat kita lahat, pinapakita niya lahat, ang angulo, kumpleto. Prepare sketch diagram of the scene. So, aside from the photography, we have, it has to be supplemented by the sketch. Conduct detailed search. So, kumpleto yung pag-search. Record and collect physical evidence. So, record, collect physical evidence. Conduct final survey. Yan, to make sure that we have gathered all the necessary pieces of evidence. And after we have conduct, conducted final survey, we now have to release the crime scene. So, how do we do preparation and approach? First is to evaluate legal ramifications of entering the crime scene and search for evidence. So, when you say legal ramifications, yan, tignan natin. Dapat sumunod tayo sa uh, legal step-by-step process. We shall not violate constitutional rights. Any constitutional rights, di ba? Ano ba yung mga constitutional rights? Rights of persons against self-incrimination, di ba? Rights against illegal search and seizure, di ba? Yung mga yun. So, dapat iwasan natin yung mga yun. And aside from that, isa mo na rin natin yung element ng crime. So, let's say for example, the crime is uh, murder. So, dapat alam natin yung element ng murder. So, yung mga element ng murder, yun ang hahanapin natin while we search for evidence. Conduct briefing before arriving at the crime scene. So, in this scenario, the team leader had already assume that uh, no, I mean, in this scenario it is already assumed that the investigator was informed by the first, uh, by the first responder through call. Kumbaga uh, natawagan na ni first responder si team leader na ay ganito yung, ganito yung sitwasyon dito sa crime scene. Ganito, ganito. So yan, hindi pa sila nakakarating sa crime scene nagkakanda ka ng briefing yung team leader. Yan. However, in most cases, uh, doon lang nagkakanda ng briefing yung team leader sa crime scene mismo. Kasi sinasama na niya yung finding niya sa initial assessment niya, initial survey niya. So, after his initial survey, doon talaga regular kinakanda ang briefing. But in this case, uh, different scenario, na unang na-inform yung team leader. So, before they arrive at the crime scene, the team leader already <coughs> briefed his members. Select person in charge prior to arrival at the scene. So, kung yung case is murder, meron din tayong mga, di ba sa other states, meron silang homicide division, crimes against property division, mga ganun. So, kung yung homicide, uh, homicide ang kaso, yung experts sa pag-imbestiga ng homicide ang i-assign. Ganon. So, select person in charge prior to the arrival at the scene. So, depende rin sa crime scene. De- at saka depende rin sa pieces of evidence. Kung yung piece of evidence is all about ballistics, bala, shell, ganon. Hindi, ang i-assign din natin dyan is yung mga ballisticians. Consider safety and comfort of the SOCO team members. So, dapat, before the arrival of the SOCO, uh, dapat make sure na wala na silang risk, wala na yung suspect sa crime scene, as much as possible. 
walang bomb threat sa crime scene. Under still under preparation and approach, we have here the command post. The command post is the center of communication. And aside from it, it is where decision making is done by the team leader. Tapos, the command post also serves as the temporary quarters. Diba, ang bilis ng oras ah. So, secure and protect the crime scene. Take control of the scene upon arrival. Determine up to what extent the crime scene has been protected. Observe crime scene security. Obtain information from personnel or witnesses. So, if we are SOCO, kanino tayo mag-open ng information? Primarily sa investigator on case. Tapos, kung kulang tayo nakuha natin sa investigator on case, pwede rin natin tanongin si first responder. And aside from that, the witnesses. Take extensive notes. Do not rely on memory. Always take down notes. And keep out from danger. Initiate, uh, initiate preliminary survey. We have to establish the crime scene boundary. So, pagka sa bomb explosion, kung saan tumapon yung pinaka malayo na pieces o piece ng bomba, mag-adjust ka pa ng 50 meters from that. So, mag-extend ka pa ng 50 meters from that. And from that, mag-bubo ka ng circumference. Yun na ngayon yung crime scene mo. So, do, yun na yung crime scene mo. But, in other cases, kung saan tumilapon yung pinaka farthest piece of evidence, then doon na ang isang portion ng perimeter mo. So, yun na ang crime scene boundary mo. The person in charge should maintain administrative and emotional control. Yun nga. During investigation, napansin nyo naman, kahit na hindi sa investigation, kahit na sa in all aspects of life, pag kayong isang tao is emotional, tapos gumawa ng desisyon, most likely, mali yung desisyon niya pagka emotional siya nung ginawa niyong desisyon na yan. Mayroong pagsisisi later on dyan. Ah, kung napansin nyo, pagka ano, pag kayong tao galit, tapos gumawa ng desisyon, desisyon habang galit, most likely nagiging violent yan. It leads to further damages to crime. Ganyan. So, dapat uh, the investigator should not be emo uh, emotional. Dapat may self-control siya. Select appropriate narrative description technique. So, gaya ng sabi ko kanina, dapat tama lang yung narrative description nyo. Acquire preliminary photographs. When we say preliminary photographs, these are photographs taken before you have place a tagging or marking on the pieces of evidence. These are photographs acquired just upon your arrival at the crime scene. Delineate the extent of the search area. So, parang uh, from the boundary of the crime scene, hati-hati nyo rin yung search area kung marami kayo. Organize method and procedures. Determine personnel and equipment Needs. So, kung yung isang crime scene is a cliff, ang isang equipment na kailangan nyo dyan is rope. Siyempre, kailangan nyo ng rope. Yung is, kung yung isang portion ng crime scene is uh, river, malalim, eh, kailangan nyo rin ng swim suit, uh, swim suit or swim apparatus. Yan. Identify and protect transient evidence. What are transient evidence? These are pieces of evidence that are easily destroyed. One example of this is our fingerprint. As time passes by, na, nawawala yung fingerprint natin. Di ba? Usang nawawala as time passes by. Same is true with DNA, blood stains, yan. Especially during, if the crime scene is uh, outside or outdoors, tapos may tendency pa na uulan, <laughs> dapat makakulik na tayo ng ebidensya bago pa umulan. Kasi pagka umulan yan, hindi wala na. Naugasan na yung transit evidence natin. Yung footprint. Naugasan na yung shoe print. Naugasan na rin yung dugo. Yung semen. O kaya, na-move na yung other 
pieces of evidence, yung shell. Minub na ng ulan. Di ba? So, pagka namove na yung evidence, mga evidensya, most likely, hindi na maging conclusive yung result ng investigasyon natin. Develop general theory of the crime. So, how do you develop general theory of the crime? Through crime scene reconstruction. You have two types of reconstruction, the mental and the physical reconstruction. You have to make extensive notes, notes, notes all the time. Evaluate physical evidence possibilities. You have to determine what evidence is likely to be presented. So, kaya nang sabi ko kanina, pagka murder case yan, tignan nyo yung wound, o ano ba yung wound? Stab wound, o knife na lang hanapin natin. Concentrate on the most transient evidence. So, priority, i-priority natin yung mga transient evidence natin. And evaluate whether or not evidence appears intentionally contrived. Ayan. Mayroon tayong mga pieces of evidence sometimes na sinadyang inilabas. Ayan. Pero, hindi pala siya in any way related to crime. Gaya ng example na nasabi ko sa'yo, sa inyo noon, yung magnanakaw na kinukuhanan niya yung biktima niya ng mga properties niya. Ayan. So, nakuhanan niya ng properties yung unang biktima niya. Tapos, pupunta sa second na bahay na bibiktimahin niya, akyat bahay to, tapos doon niya iiwan yung mga properties na nakuha niya doon sa naunang na biktima niya. Ngayon, ang magiging suspect is his first victim. So, cellphone yun na nakuha niya sa unang biktima niya, mas malaki yung halaga na nakuha niya doon sa bahay na pangalawa, iiwan niya yung cellphone ng naunang na biktima niya doon. O kaya yung mga valid IDs. So, ang victim ngayon, ang suspect ngayon is yung first victim. Yan. Focus first on easily accessible areas of open view. Ayan. Uh, parang transient evidence lang din. Focus first on the easily accessible areas. So, what are the easily accessible areas? These are our outdoors. Di ba? Outdoor crime scene. Unahin natin yung mga outdoor crime scene kasi eh, any per, anytime pagka may hindi tayo nabantayan pwede may nakapasok mo dyan. Nanira na ng evidence. Consider whether the evidence appears to be or to have been moved or moved unintentionally. Ayan. Tignan natin kung na-move ba yung evidence unintentionally. So, kung na-move unintentionally, saan kaya yung original na location niya? Evaluate whether or not evidence appears intentionally contrived. So, naulit. How do you prepare narrative description? We represent the scene in a general to specific format. Parang yung photography lang din. Get the general view, mid range view to close up view. So, in doing the crime scene, describe the crime scene in a general view. This is the house of uh, so and so or the crime scene is a house owned by so and so. Tapos, going specific, yung evidence na, yung mga specific dyan. We recovered evidence, bullet, from the yan, so and so. And we have established a witness named Anna. She stated, Anna stated that. Kung ano yung sinabi niya. So, yan yung from general to specific. So, how do we prepare narrative description? We use writing, we use audio recording, and videography. So, we do photograph of the crime scene and sketches of the crime scene. How do we conduct detailed search and collection of physical evidence? Ayan, Excel lang tayo konti kasi late tayo nag-impisa. Unless may, yung mga may klase, you are excused. Pwede na. Anyways, eh, isisave ko naman tong record nito sa mga may klase ng 7 to 8. So, accomplish search based on previous evaluation of evidence possibilities and conduct search in general manner and work to the specific regarding evidence items. So, detailed search. Kompetuhin nyo yung evidensya. So, uh, pagka-shooting incident yan, ano ba yung kompetong evidensya na kailangan natin makuha? Depende rin sa crime scene. Kung yung crime scene is indoors, so, the pieces of evidence na kailangan natin sa shooting incident indoors is yan. Yung barrel, kung pwede, kung meron, kung, kung iniwan. Yung mga shells, pen shell, yung mga bullet. 
bullet holes yan uh, bullet direction by placing a stick on the bullet hole di ba kung uh, may bullet hole diyan pasukan niyo ng stick ngayon kung saan nakaturo yung stick doon nanggaling yung putok so doon yung doon yung position ng shooter yan and aside from that dahil indoor siya try din nating mag develop ng latin twins sa entry points kung saan pumasok tayo yung suspect sa door kaya or sa window yan tapos possible blood stain kung may blood yung perpetrator doon kung nanlaban yung biktima bago siya namatay pwedeng may blood yung uh, ano doon yung uh, perpetrator so that's how you do detailed search of physical evidence tapos uh, aside from that picturean mo na rin lahat ng possible kaya na may connection sa biktima at saka sa perpetrator baka may naiwan na property yung perpetrator doon o kaya kung ano yung missing sa crime scene na possible na kinuha ng perpetrator para later on applyan natin yung suspect ng search warrant kung nakita natin sa suspect yung nawawalang item di pasi di more most likely he is the perpetrator conduct detailed search again use specialized search patterns such as grid pattern strip or lane spiral yan Meron pa tayong wheel pattern dito pang malawakan na crime scene. Wherein, yung wheel pattern is manggagaling lahat sila sa gitna going to, uh, going outwards. Yan. Spiral naman, mostly applicable sa isang room. Uh, medyo sa sala type na crime scene. And how do you conduct spiral? Most often, di pupunta sa center yung uh, searcher, tapos mag-move in circular motion. Palabas sa door. So, ganun siya maghanap ng ebidensya. So, ang unang mahanap niya syempre is nearest the center. Going to the farthest from the center. Photograph all items before collection of evidence, mark evidence locations on diagram sketch. So, gaya ng naunang na-discuss natin, meron tayong yung photographic plan. Andun lahat nakarecord yung mga napicturan natin at saka kung saan na picturan. Same is true with our evidence recovery lag. Andun lahat nakarecord lahat ng evidence na nagather natin and kung saan sila portion ng crime scene nagather. Yan. Complete evidence log with appropriate notations for each item of evidence. When we say notations, yung complete na description ng evidence. Do not handle evidence excessively after recovery. So, wag magtagal na hawakan yung evidence siya. Wag ikitan din. Seal all evidence containers at the crime scene. So, the importance of sealing evidence is to preserve its originality. Kung maga sa letter, di ba? Bakit ba kayo nagsisil sa letter? To prove that it was not opened and it was not read by someone else, di ba? So, letter, ilalagay nyo sa envelope, mailing envelope. Tapos kung minsan, gusto nyo pang manigurado, maglalagay pa kayo ng signature in between the folding opening side, di ba? So, doon, sisignature nyo pa yun. Ngayon, pagka dumating sa inyo yung letter, naman, kay eh, recipient, nakita nyo na uy, misaligned itong signature dito sa opening ng envelope ah, nabuksan na to, so ayun yung suspicion nyo di ba, so that is how seal or seal works conduct detailed search be sure to obtain appropriate known standards pagka carpet yung yung uh, in issue Dapat alam niyo yung standard na fiber sample niya from the suspect sample. Pagka fingerprint yan, dapat meron kayong standard at saka yung evidence or crime scene fingerprint. Pagka bullet yan, meron kayong yung evidence bullet at saka yung 
uh, genuine bullet. Pagka, pagka, pagka question document yan, dapat meron kayong yung authentic signature compared with the uh, fake signature, di ba? Ayun. Conduct final survey. So, how do you conduct final survey? Final survey is the, the critical review. So, doon mo titignan, i-walk through mo ulit yung crime scene, titignan mo kung nakompleto ba lahat ng evidensya. Wala na ba kayong nakaliktaan? Baka may namislook kayong, baka may bullet pool pala doon na hindi nyo pala napicturan. Ganun. And double check documentation. Check to ensure evidence is accounted for before the party in the scene. So, dapat kompleto, nakuha nyo lahat. And also, ensure that all equipment used in the crime scene search is gathered. So, dapat lahat din ng mga equipment nyo na nagamit nyo sa crime scene to include the police line, yan, is also gathered kasi magagamit nyo pa sa susunod na mga crime scene. Same is, uh, same is, same principle is true in surgical operations, di ba? kayong mga medical doctors na conduct ng surgical operations. Uh, before they conduct the operation, binibilang nila yung, in-account nila yung mga equipment nila. And before they finish the operation, in-account din ulit nila yung mga equipment nila. So, pagka nagkulang ng isa, uy, may isang namawala, hanapin nila. Kasi it's possible na baka naiwan pala sa laman, sa loob ng katawan ng inoperahan nila. Eh, it's possible that it may cause the death of the patient. Yan, makakakasok pa sila. Homicide to negligence. Consider this critical issue. Have you gone far enough in the search for evidence? Did you do your best? Ginawa ba yung best mo? Have you gone far enough? Have you documented all essential things? Na document nyo ba lahat? ng necessary na evidence and made no assumption which may prove to be incorrect in the future kumbaga lahat ba ng evidence ang nakuha nyo ay nagjajay wala kayang isa na magkocontradict sa isa yan. hindi kaya kayo magkakamali in the future so yan yung mga sasagutin nyo during your final survey before you leave the crime scene and next to the final survey we have the re release of the crime scene at minimum documentation of release should indicate the following so time and date of release of the crime scene panong oras at anong araw and by whom so sino ang nag-release ng crime scene si team leader ng SOCO and to whom was it released? Kanino ni-release yung crime scene? To the investigator on case. Yan. Ensure that appropriate inventory has been provided. And only the person in charge has the authority to release the crime scene. So, yan na yun. Pagka nasa crime scene na yun, ay pag nasa investigator on case na yung crime scene, Magkakandak naman siya ng kanyang final survey. Tapos, then will he now release the crime scene to the owner. Yan. Consider the need to have certain specialists serve the scene before it is released. Yan. Investigator is satisfied that all pieces of evidence have been recovered. So, kung nasatisfied na yung investigator na lahat ng evidence, evidence ay nakuha niya, Eh, pwede na siyang mag ng crime scene. Upon the formal release of the crime scene to the proper authority, a warrant is already required for the investigator's re-entry to the crime scene. That's according to the POP Section 4, Paragraph I. Ayan. So, during the release of the crime scene, pagka na-release na ni investigator yung crime scene, tapos, ay! May nakalimutan pala ako. Ayun, hindi na siya pwedeng bumalik sa crime scene. Kailangan na niya ngayon ng search warrant for him to enter the crime scene. So, ayun. Uh, 
Uh, next meeting, we'll be talking about crimes in search and collection of evidence. With that, guys, do you have questions? Uy. None so far, sir. Ah, kala ko wala na kayo. None so far. Uh, oh, may... I think I will be giving you activity for tomorrow. It will be sent through, it will be announced through, ano, your messenger and your Google Class. Ayun. Para magka may, ano naman ako, may ma-record ulit ako na source of scores nyo. Okay, guys? Yes, sir. Uh, so you have no questions, ah? You have no questions? Wala na kayong katanungan? Anan po, sir. Ah, by the way, in relation to your examination pala, hindi pala po pwedeng multiple choice lahat yung examination nyo. Ano pala? Dapat pala mayroon siyang tatlong part. Dapat pala is mayroon siyang multiple choice, identification, true or false, or modified true or false, essay, mga ganun. Ganun pala lahat ng exam, hindi pwede yung multiple choice lang lahat. So, expect those types of exam. Okay, guys? Sir, yes, sir. Okay. Sir, yes, sir. Sige. Happy, sir. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you very much, guys. We are dismissed. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, po. Thank you, sir. 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 Th